Welcome to Learnpedia, the ultimate JEM need prep tool that is currently being used by over 20,000 aspirants. Now let's see if you can answer this important question. If you think you got the answer, then post it in the comment section below. To understand the concept behind this question, watch the video that follows. Let us now discuss Bohar curve. It was explained as oxygen dissociation curve. We'll try to discuss in both ways. Oxygen association curve as well as dissociation curve. Association means loading of oxygen to hemoglobin. Dissociation means unloading of oxygen from hemoglobin to tissue cells. Simply at this point where loading is there, we can say it could be the part of external respiration because we know that the loading of oxygen to hemoglobin occur near lung alveoli and this would be the part of internal respiration. So now we try to discuss association of oxygen to hemoglobin at different PO2. Similarly, we'll discuss release of O2 from hemoglobin at different PO2. Now let us take say its partial pressure of oxygen and its percentage of saturation. At about 10 mm of Hg, it's about 14% saturated. At about 20 pressure, it's about 25 to 30% saturation. At 30, it is about 50 to 55% of saturation. At 40 mm, it's around 72 to 75% and gradually at about 96, it's around 97%. Earlier we have taken it as 100 mm of Hg and we have taken this 100% saturation. So at 10, 14%, at 20, 25 to 30, 30 mm of Hg will lead to 55% saturation, 40% will lead to 70 to 75 and at 96 it is 97. We have discussed ml of oxygen at this level. Say if we say at this much of saturation, blood will have 20 ml of oxygen, actually it is 19.0. At this part, blood still has 15 ml just slightly less than 15 and at this level blood will have only 5 ml it was fully oxygenated blood it was venous blood after normal delivery of oxygen to tissue cell means only 25 percent of to tissue cell and it was also venous blood but during sternus exercise now we will try to learn this graph with all the values now see here on this x-axis the partial pressure of oxygen is mentioned and on this y-axis percentage of saturation is mentioned and on the right hand side at this y-axis it's ml of oxygen per 100 ml of blood. First you can see the graph is sigmoid. You can see here there is slow rise, there is slow rise in the graph and here you can see again bit slow rise but at this point you can see it's a very steep rise. If this slow rise goes in the same fashion then curve should go in this way. This steep rise shows that some initial molecule binding of oxygen will enhance the binding of oxygen later on and this effect is called allosteric phenomena and this phenomena always shows sigmoid curve. Now you can see here at this value of 40 mm of Hg we are getting this much we are getting this much of saturation it's around 72 to 75 percent i can say this is the value of partial pressure of oxygen in venous blood during normal condition and you can see here at 100 it's about 100 percent saturation and it is as 20 ml of oxygen this is the case of arterial blood you can see now if we talk about the 20 ml of oxygen in arterial blood and is now going to release to the tissue cell now you can see here the release of oxygen is very slow see here up to this limit means we have covered the pressure difference of 60 mmHg but still we are capable to deliver only 5 ml of oxygen 20 ml to 15 ml so tissues are getting just 5 ml of oxygen during normal condition means venous blood still having lot of oxygen which would be around you can see here prox 15 ml means venous blood still have so much oxygen it can deliver to tissue cell in some quick sessions or during sudden work now you can see here from this point up to this point there is steep fall and you can see only 20 mm of Hg pressure changes here and there is a big fall in the level of oxygen from 15 to 5 you can see 10 ml as we have already mentioned that during sternus exercise body or tissues will get 75 percent oxygen from the blood means 15 ml oxygen from the blood right from 20 to 5 means pressure will fall from 100 to 20 while during normal condition pressure will fall from 100 to 40 and just deliver how much 5 ml so go down from this 20 level to this 5 ml we are talking about dissociation if you move in otherwise from down to up we say it association 
So as I already said, we'll discuss this curve in two ways: association and the dissociation. This association curve or this Bohr curve is affected by a number of factors. One is level of CO2. One is pH. One is temperature. One is diphosphoglycerate. Let us now see the pattern of these curve with temperature. You can see here. This is the curve at 10 degree, 20 degree, 38 degree. 43 degree just try to notice this curve this curve is at normal body temperature and with the increase in temperature curve shifts to right side means increase in temperature decreases oxygen binding to hemoglobin you can observe from the curve if i take the value of 20 pressure at this value on this curve which is at higher temperature there is less oxygen binding it's less than 60% and if we take this curve which is at body temperature we can observe it's around 70 72% binding so we can say if we are going to increase the temperature then curve is going to shift the right side means binding affinity of hemoglobin with oxygen is going to decrease let us now discuss these curve with levels of co2 that how co2 is going to affect the binding of oxygen with hemoglobin co2 is going to affect binding of o2 with hemoglobin as it was in case of temperature when temperature rises curve shifts to right side in the same way when co2 rises curve shifts to the right side now you can see here from the following curves now see it's a sigmoid curve it's decreased carbon dioxide simultaneously you can see in the curve ph is also mentioned here now see the factor of ph as well as factor of co2 when co2 concentration increases the curve will shift to right side you can see in the mid curve this one you can see here this is the curve at normal arterial carbon dioxide with let us now discuss effect of co2 and ph on this bohr curve with some graphical representation you can see here at pco2 20 mm of hg and ph 7.6 the graph shows this pattern now see at pco2 40 and ph 7.4 graph gets shifted to right side this is actually normal arterial condition now see more now you can compare the difference whenever carbon dioxide concentration increases the curve shifted to right side means affinity is going to decrease and you can see here also initially the ph was 7.6 7.4 7.2 it's decreasing ph if we move more towards acidic zone the curve will shift more towards right side there are now three factors major one is temperature increase in temperature will shift curve to right side means less affinity of hemoglobin for oxygen same increase in co2 will also shift curve to right side again affinity of hemoglobin for oxygen decreases same for the ph say if we say ph decreases we can say h plus ion increases both are same meaning means the curve will shift to right side one more factor which we have already discussed about dpg diphosphoglycerate also shifts bohr curve to right side so finally in nutshell increase in temperature will shift curve to right side increase in co2 level will shift curve to right side fall in ph means conditions are getting acidic simply you can say number of h plus ions are increasing means they are creating acidic condition curve will shift to right side and increase in level of diphosphoglycerate will also shift curve to right side let us discuss one more important thing about this curve it's called p50 value say so i said p50 value it is also called bohr effect p50 value reflects partial pressure of oxygen at which hemoglobin get 50 percent saturated as we have mentioned previously in table at po2 of 30 the hemoglobin is approx 50 to 55 percent saturated say we can see it from graph so graph is sigmoid and we are getting this value of 50 percent saturation or 55 percent saturation if we draw it up to the x axis the pressure will get here is around 30 now compare this graph if i said the graph is shifting to right side i can say i'll get this 55 percent saturation at somewhere at higher pressure so simply i can say i am using more pressure of oxygen to get same 50 to 55% saturation simply i can say i am using more oxygen to get the same value as i can see in here this is p50 or p55 percent saturation this is again the same value but i am getting little bit at around the pressure of 50 and this is at 30 so i am using more oxygen molecule to get the same value earlier i was getting the same value at lesser oxygen so i can say the curve which is at left is more efficient than the curve at right so this p50 value reflects the affinity of hemoglobin for oxygen this p50 value shifts to right side at again the same thing high co2 high h plus ions means low ph more temperature and more dpg value 
So these are again the four condition which will shift the P50 value. This value is P50. This value is P50 to right side. So more is the shifting of P50 to the right side, more will be oxygen required to attain the 50% saturation. So we can say less is the affinity of hemoglobin for oxygen. If P50 value reaches around 90 or 100 means we can say add this much of pressure means we are getting pressure 90 to 100 mm of Hg of oxygen and still we are not getting 50% saturation. In that case, person will die because there is no proper loading of oxygen and no unloading of oxygen. So person will die in this case. Hey there, hope you understood the concept. Here's the answer to the question that was asked in the beginning. Found this video useful? Hit the like and share buttons to enjoy more such videos. LearnBedia's JE and Need Prep tools contain over 4,000 videos and over 20,000 questions. You can access them online through our website or offline through an SD card or a pen drive. To buy now, visit www.learnpedia.in. You can also try a free demo of the product before buying.